So what do I have to do here? Uh, just, well, just hold, uh, here you go. Just talk right into that, kind of just, you know, blow your mouth a little bit so I can see it. And uh, let me see if I can hear you good. Yeah, I can hear you great. Okay, go right ahead, sure. And uh, you might just start off with your name and uh, where you were, and uh, just tell us your best story. Thank you. Okay, my name is Carl, C-A-R-L, initial H, Petersdorf, P-E-T-E-R-S-D-O-R-F. And uh, I entered the Navy in uh, 1937. And uh, I got out at the day they had the draft. So I had to uh, go home and they said, well, you, you go down to the draft, you don't have to worry, you've been in. And so I went down there a little later and they said, no, it don't make any difference. Your name's up there and the na Army needs you. You go back into the service. I said, I'm not going into the Army, I'll go back to the Navy. So then I made a career in the Navy for 28 years and in uh, I was stationed at the Naval Supply Center in Oakland, California, and I was the Ordnance Technical Officer at uh, the Ordnance Supply Depot and also officer in charge of the Navy Small Arms Repair Station uh, under the Bureau of Ordnance. And then my orders came in when we were up uh, given a um, uh, 4th of July little uh, ceremony in Oakland. And so my orders came in on the 4th of July to Korea. So I went to Korea in 1950. The war started June 26, and then I was uh, over there in Pusan. And I, um, we didn't have any ships, but I was ordered there to help establish a fleet activity so that the Navy ships come in could get logistics, both oil supplies and uh, ammunition and other food, you know, and so. We didn't have anything, we just went over there and we, so I was, we had to join with the army at Pusan. And we'd get, catch these big uh, army trucks and go out to the army camp and stay overnight with the army and then in the Navy or come back in the morning by jumping into one of their trucks and come back to the port. And it took us a while to get established. But while we were there at the, with the army, and uh, all of a sudden we get this alert. Everybody stay in the uh, barracks or whatever your tent. Because the, uh, the Koreans, the North Koreans, it appears that are coming down near the Pusan, Korea, I mean, Pusan uh, area. So they sent out tanks. And those tanks going up there to intercept them. But then they made the wrong turn and they were coming back. So the, the army thought it was the North Koreans that was coming down, but it was the army that got confused. But anyway, we finally got another ship to come in and we stayed on the ship in Pusan. And then uh, part of my other duties was uh, uh, advisor to the Korean Navy. We give the Korean Navy two fig frigates and then we help train their crews. And uh, uh, those People were uh, gung-ho. And so my duty was to help train the crews and then we'd provide them logistics like oil, gas, and fuel oil and everything. They would come in after, they'd go out on patrol in uh, Korea, North, uh, South Korea. And I'd come back in, I'd go aboard, and they had the guns all tore down and they had their rice stowed in the ready boxes and in the magazines, they had all the ammunition out and all the magazines was full of rice. So we had to indoctrinate them and they finally got the idea, you know. But then I uh, uh, became that advisor to the Korean Navy and in addition to doing my duties with the fleet activity. And then June, summer of June, I, I was there for a whole, about a year and a half, and the uh, President Sigmund Rhee, who was president of Korea, South Korea at that time. So he presented me with the Korean Military Order of Mary, Merit for my service in Korea. And it was a nice deal because that was the first time I met the president. 
but part of my duty there was to fuel ships that we tied up on ports on the, in the South Korea. And uh, we had what is called these uh, DEs, these destroyer escorts. They were turboelectric ships. So they would moor at the, off the dock and uh, cut off their, you know, disengage their propeller and they would steam and they provided electricity to Korea and they tied into the power lines. And that was a big problem, big project. And we provided them with fuel. They couldn't get less than 30% in their uh, tanks because they, if they got lower than 30%, they had to get underway and get away because they didn't want to get caught in the heavy weather. So anyway, that was part of my deal. It was a great experience, and I worked with the Koreans, and they were good people, and they were all interested in uh, doing the job. And it, I've had a wonderful experience from them. Well, that's just the kind of stories I'd like to hear, love to hear. And then uh, speak about the monument here, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. How do you like it? How do you like the monument? I love it. It was a great deal. I've got my name on it. Good, good, way to go. So uh, that's an end, another little gesture I got. You might say they're gifts. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, but it's nice having both of you come out and do this for us. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah, my dad was over there for a little while. And, of course, uh, the good news is he got the GI Bill. Oh, yeah. So think what that did for our family. Well, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was still in the service, see, so I stayed till uh, I could retire. I, I retired July 1st, 1965. Wow. I went in at 19, uh, June, six, six days I got out of high school, graduated. The 12th of June, I was in the Navy. <laughs> so I, I had a good career, though. Uh, well, thank you for I was in World War II. Tell us about that for a second, because that's actually what I... So you joined pretty early then. Yeah. So you were... I was 17. Yeah. I went into World War II. Tell us about uh, anything you want to tell us about World War II. Well, when I went back in the service, I got orders to uh, uh, outfit and onboard the new battleship USS North Carolina BB-55, which was built in uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard, and it was the first battleship that was built since 1923. And the USS Washington uh, sister ship was being built in the Philadelphia Navy Yard. And then once we got in commission and got our crews all trained, we went down and had our shakedown in Guantanamo Bay and Cuba. And then we came on the West Coast and we went to Guadalcanal. Wow. Uh, initial invasion of Guadalcanal. But when we pulled into Pearl Harbor, all those ships were in disarray, you know, and, and different procedures of destruction. And then as we walked in, we manned a rail and all those people, they manned the rail and all those ships that they were stationed there. And then they were cheering us because they were down hard because they had a hell of a time. And then we went to Korea and I was down there and then we got torpedoed down there. And they came back to Pearl, got repaired, and then we went back down again. And then I got my orders and I came back to Pearl and I back to the states i rode to indianapolis uss indianapolis wow. back to the states and got off and then i went down and i picked up a new apa being built in long beach california wow. and i was on that all during world war ii until the war ended and then when i got off that i was ordered to the uss mount mckinley Okay. which was a, a group command ship for amphibious duty. And the, the ship was ordered to uh, uh, back down to uh, the island. I can't think of the name. It wasn't, uh, Guad it wasn't Kwajalein. It was, uh, um, it just slipped my mind. But then we had the atomic bomb tests where we did the atomic bomb test down there. Yeah, Tinian and, uh, uh, oh boy, what's the other one? Bikini Island? Bikini. We went down to Bikini, and we had the air burst, and uh, and then the underwater burst. Oh, so, so wait, just, so you saw an atomic Oh, blast? yeah. 
Oh, well, tell us about that because that makes you a special veteran that you're an atomic veteran. That's right. Tell us about that. Well, the air burst, it was an air, and it detonated too high. Uh -huh. So it didn't too, do too much damage to the ship. So the next test was the uh, uh, underwater burst. And when that baby went up, it, that water went up there, and when it kept going up high, and it was all vapor and salt water, and, and then it came down, and then it, like a big donut, and it kept coming out. And we were about eight miles off the Bikini Island, because we had all these ships in there. We had the Saratoga, the old aircraft carrier Saratoga, and a bunch of the other ships. And on these ships, they had all these animals. And they put those animals on the deck. Right, right. And they would, uh, in different configurations. And then they could go aboard and see how those uh, animals sustained the uh, bursts and stuff. Well, exactly. One of our people that we've recorded, Pearl Harbor Survivor, he was on the Pennsylvania, and he was in charge of putting the animals. He's like on a farm. But he said they didn't give him any protection from the radioactivity. Well, they, what equipment did you get? We didn't have any equipment. And the only thing we had was some dark goggles for the explosion. See? Could you see the light and everything? Oh man, I, I was off the deck on the day that the uh, underwater burst was detonated. Wow. And uh, we were there for six weeks or six months down there. And then when we came back to Pearl, I mean to Pearl and then into San Francisco, they wouldn't let us dock. Right, yeah. Be because we were radioactive. Yeah, yeah you were. Yeah. Yeah, but you're just living on this ship. Yeah, well, <laughs> because when you went into the harbor, all the salt water in the harbor was uh, radioactive. And then all your uh, sanitary water it came in and, and through your fire mains and everything, and it contaminated all your fire mains and everything else. And so uh, they said, no, you can't come in. You guys are hot. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, real quickly though, please uh, tell me about the explosion. Any colors or sound or anything else? Well, we didn't hear any sound yeah, yeah. because it was muffled on the underwater. Uh -huh. But it went up like a big mushroom, and wow. it just kept going up. And then all of a sudden it stopped. Then it just dropped down, and then all that water and stuff. And then it was pushing it all out like a big donut. Now, did you actually see like ships in the air? Oh yeah, some of them were went up vertical. Wow. Some of the old battleships wow. went up vertical, wow. and then they went down. Wow. Man, it was an experience. Well, you must have had some kind of talent to be put on a battleship at such a young age and to do all this stuff. Did you have a good education or what? Well, you... I was in gunnery all okay. my whole career. Okay. And when I got on, a, my first ship was the USS New Orleans. Okay. Uh, CA-32, a heavy cruiser. Yeah. And then I was, we moved over to Hawaii and we was called a Hawaiian Detachment. And then I decided, no, I'm not going to stay. But I got promoted to a petty officer, third class, as a gunner's mate. And uh, so... Uh, they said, well, if you don't want ship over or extend, we're going to swap uh, with the battleship. They brought all the battleships from Long Beach over there into Hawaii. But you see, we couldn't accommodate all those ships and the aircraft carriers and the cruisers. So they would be out training and we'd be in. We'd go out and the battleships would come in. That's why they were in port when December 7th arrived. And... Uh, Man, that was something else, I tell you. And uh, and when did you come back into Pearl after the attack then to see everything? Well, Where the, were you during the attack? Oh, I was uh, putting that ship in commission in New York. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's a new battleship. Sure, sure. So it was several weeks until you got out to Pearl Well, it, Well, we went into in 44. Okay, okay. June of 44. Okay, was, yeah, sure, sure. Now I see. Because of the expense. And they're still saluting you guys and all. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Now I can... They were cheering us on because then, man, they were happy to see this uh, nice new ship come in. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It was yeah. a tremendous experience. I'll never forget it because I got a lot of good memories. Then I had a lot of good memories in Korea, too. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? And just thanks for stopping by, though, sir. Well, I was appreciating uh, the fact that you let me say my little piece. <laughs> well, you're so welcome. It's my pleasure to get the history. Uh, we'll tell this history to all these politicians. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> That's my daughter. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you very we'll put much. Put this on YouTube and all, or okay. we'll figure it out. <laughs>